and welcome to Front Porch Conversations here at Advent Christian Village. My guest today is Jean Snyder. Jean, thank you for being here. You're welcome. We want to have the members know a little about you, and uh, we'll just do that through a conversation. Okay. And um, where did you arrive on this planet? Oh, well, I was born uh, in New Albany, Indiana, which is right across the river from Louisville, Kentucky and lived there the first eight years of my life before we moved. And where did the moving take you? During the war, Daddy had a construction company and they couldn't get supplies, so he sold his business and we moved to Virginia, New York, um, where he worked in the war industries. And then later we moved to Tampa, where we spent, spent most, of my, most of my years, from fourth grade up through high school and, and beyond. <laughs> well. Think back, if you would, and share a memory with me before you got to Tampa, a pleasant memory of childhood. Pleasant memory. Uh, I don't know how pleasant it was, but on, when we lived in uh, Long Island, New York, it was during the war, and uh, I remember we had air raids, things like that. There were German U-boats seen off the coast of New York. We, all the kids had to wear um, dog tags to get people back to their children in case of a, a, a kind of attack or something, but it was very interesting. We, it was kind of adventurous for us kids. I know it was probably nerve-wracking for mom and dad, but uh, those were, that was interesting too. Um, but, you know, we just had a, a good, good life, mom and daddy and us four kids, you know, and, uh, but I don't remember any in particular. I have so many that you don't have enough time to, <laughs> to cover all that. Well, I've never heard anybody mention that they had to wear, as children, you had to wear dog tags during that time. Yeah, we, it was right. I remember on one air raid, we had, um, it went off, and the teacher said, Jean, go with Elaine. I remember the girl's name, Elaine Lang. And uh, so I went home with her, and my sister, who was in school with a higher grade, went home, and Mother says, where's Jean? And Barb says, I don't know. And it was nerve-wracking because we didn't have any car or anything so eventually I got home with this girl's daddy took me home it's kind of fuggy I was only in the second grade at that time but that was kind of nerve-wracking but we you know but then we moved down to Tampa and uh, it was after the war and uh, lived there most of my young life and you mentioned your siblings there, that story is a part of Advent Christian Village too yes I have a sister Barbara Rawls in Park of the Pines and uh, she's been here about 16 years and my other sister, Sue Lazar, moved to Dossier uh, last August. And then I have a brother, Dick, who lives in California mainly, and they, he and his wife, Nancy, spend about five months here from December to May. So at that time, we have all four siblings here. And they live off campus, is that right? They live in Butterfield Acres, uh-huh. And Jean, you live in Dowling House? Dowling House, fourth floor. Yep. Uh, moved up there when they uh, demolished the homes along Dowling Park Drive in preparation for Taylor Commons. So, yeah, so I've been there five years. Um, so you're in, you moved to Tampa. Mm -hmm. What what part of the, what part of that life of, of those years are especially memorable to you? Well, our connection with the uh, Francis Avenue Advent Christian Church. I know. Um, I remember walking to church with Mama, Daddy. Uh, kind of was not as close to the Lord as he was later, but so we, we had a good fellowship there at the church, John Cargyle's uh, church, um, and we had, you know, that was our life, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, young people's, you know, so forth, but uh, we had a really good time. I, re I really enjoyed the blessed time, and we've got some others here from the same church, like Janine Stevens, who just moved here in December, we've got Mildred Wade, a friend of mine who's been here probably a little longer than I, and uh, uh, Karen Thomas, Steve Hett, we have a lot of connections to that Tampa church. But uh, I, I really enjoyed that those years. It was Winter John and Rose Cargill, pastor and his wife. Mm -hmm. And do I recall that you, during that time, came to Camp Swanee? Yes, came to Camp Swanee a couple years and ran around the camp with, with uh, like Pomeroy and all that. You know, we used to have a fun time. Uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. It was rather rustic. We had no hot water. It was sulfur water. It was, you know, the tabernacle was there. The dining room was there. We, we had an awesome time. Looked forward to it every year. It was, it was really good. And the bowl service is particularly meaningful. Particularly meaningful. 
Um, yeah. After that, what was next in your life story? Well, I graduated from, from uh, high school and um, went to work. Uh, telephone industry was a little bit later, but that's been my career. But um, I met uh, my first husband. Um, he worked at the phone company. It was Peninsula Telephone Company, later bought out by GTE. And so we was married in 1955. And uh, so he um, came, went to Roar College at that, it was called college at that time. And uh, we had um, Dan, our, our boy, and then we moved to Aurora, and uh, he was studying for the ministry. And so we lived there. We had the two girls, Dawn and, and Tana. And uh, so he went to seminary and so forth and graduated and went into the Navy as a chaplain. And so we were, we were there in, uh, in Aurora. Then, then we went to Mississippi where he was deployed with the uh, uh, Navy Seabees. Mm -hmm. So... Anyway, so that's where we were there. And then uh, uh, spinning ahead a little bit, uh, when that marriage ended, the kids and I went down to Tampa and to start our life again. And I went into uh, work at GTE. And um, I was in the business office, both residents and, and um, business uh, businesses. And then I was uh, a supervisor in the residence area and I was in revenue accounting. And um, during that time, those nine years, the kids and I had, you know, connections with the church again. It was just really wonderful. Uh, I was a church custodian for nine years, and the kids and I would clean every Friday night. You know, they were really excited about that. But anyway, then, um, uh, and then let's see. We went up to Aurora College, used to have the reunions here at the village, and um, Jean and I, my last husband, Gene and I, um, Gene Snyder, um, bumped into each other at the, at the reunion, and he was single at that time. His wife had passed away, and uh, so we just bumped into each other. He had a little boy, uh, David, and so two years later, in 1977, we married, and I became the stepmama to David, which is just like a mama. <laughs> and so we were stayed there in Valdosta. He was uh, manager of Eckert's, and uh, I worked at... Uh, I got I worked at the uh, telephone company and do, uh, through, let's see, it was Southern Bell at that point. I retired 20 years later in 1998. So I had to start a career over at age 44 to get my 20 years in so I could get a retirement because it wouldn't bridge the other. Oh, but, the other uh, I also worked at Yellow Pages earlier. Um, and so the telephone industry has been my career. And so I was real, uh, when I retired, it was amazing. It was wonderful. The last, it's almost 21 years. And so then um, we saw that it was probably necessary to make a move spinning forward um, with Jean's deteriorating health. And so we moved to the village in 2009. And shortly after that, he had an accident in the bedroom and messed his leg up really bad. And he'd had other health issues. So he was... Uh, he went to Good Sam, where he was there four and a half years, where he passed away in 2015. So, I'm, and I'm on the, like I say, fourth floor of Dowling House. I can look out over, out over the river, and I enjoy so many things here, like particularly friends, mm -hmm. connection. And uh, so we have a lot of good friends here, and it's just a great place. We knew we were going to be here eventually, known about it my whole life, like I said. But uh, we've met a lot of wonderful people, and this is, this is where we wanted to be. Well, I know one thing that you've kept up a tradition, and that's your grandson coming to camp. Yeah. Uh, the daughter, uh, unfortunately, I lost my daughter uh, in uh, 2011 after a six-year battle with uh, staph infection and, and paralysis and so forth. She had a, a daughter, uh, which, who is Savannah. That was my first granddaughter. She's 33. And Micah came by, by uh, 16 years later. They didn't know they could have uh, any more children. So... Micah began, I used to take him home all the summers, and um, he came down Camp Swanee from age seven until last year. And uh, so that was, you know, he was 16 last year. So he's going to ROTC camp this summer, so I won't see him this summer, but he's, he's loved coming every summer to camp and is, and is spending time with Mimi <laughs> and the family, yeah. 
Well, Jean, um, it's been interesting to me to learn about you and your connections because you have connections in so many mm. ways here at the community. Yeah, we've got the Aurora connection, we've got the Tampa connection, I've got Valdosta connection, you know. Your uh, siblings? Yeah, and, and, my, and, and then Janine moves in, Mildred moves, and, and you know, we just have a lot of connections. Like Steve Head, Karen, um, Pomeroy, um, College, and the Nickersons, you know, we knew them all this. So it's just fun to go see these people that we knew, and we're all kind of coming together into a, a unit. It's really fun. It's really nice. Well, you used to have a say. You had a saying about you and your husband. Because our names, mm -hmm. his name was Eugene, and I'm Jean. We weren't known as uh, Jean and Jean, so we were known as the um, pair of jeans. So it was easy for people to remember our names, you know, the pair of jeans. And somebody just mentioned that today to me. Uh, I said, what's your husband's name? I heard something funny about you. I said, yeah, we were just a pair of jeans, you know? Yeah. Well, and I understand. <laughs> I remember that you made quite a connection with other ladies whose husbands were a good Samaritan. Oh, uh, yeah, friendships. exactly. We had the, down the four and a half years at, uh, down at Good Sam, uh, around our table, Judy Young and her husband Lee and my husband Gene and I, and Dorothy and Dale was her husband, but we had a, a riotous time, as you might imagine. We had people wanting to sit at our table. I don't know why, you know. Oh, I can't but anyway, imagine. <laughs> but anyway, we had a lot of fun uh, about around there because, you know, it you can make life what you know what you will. You know, it's joy is um, happiness is a choice. I believe. I believe too. And so we just connected and laughed and. It was so funny because um, Judy Young, who's almost as crazy as I am, <laughs> but she's, her husband was um, there, Lee, and she would sometime would be feeding him, and then I'd turn around and be feeding her, you know, <laughs> and everything. So, yeah, we had a good time, but uh, I still go down there and visit, um, you know, I've got, um, well, Julie Swanson was another connection with Aurora. I've known her close to 65 years, probably. So she's down at Dossier, but we had, so this, that's Aurora connection, you know what I mean? And, uh, and for great. some of our people watching, tell us about Aurora. They may not know about Aurora College. Aurora University, University now is about 35 miles, I believe, southwest of uh, Chicago. It's a denominational school, um, and it's, it's, it's great. I, I was on the staff there at the college for the nine years that we, were, we lived in Aurora while my husband's going to college, seminary, and so forth. And uh, it's uh, beautiful. I haven't been back there since about 1980 when my son graduated from there. But um, Dr. Sherrick has done an amazing job. This college is, is boomed. It has boomed and grown. It's amazing. Uh, when she comes and speaks at some of the reunions, uh, we just God has blessed us with her. And so it, we had those years up there. That was, oh, man. We lived in Spartan Terrace, which was... Um, converted army barracks and uh, we lived there and then they tore, that's all torn down. This is all history, ancient history. <laughs> and, and uh, but we had a good time up there. My two girls were born up there at Copley. And uh, so, yeah, there's still all those memories, but you go up there, if I went there and I haven't been in years, if I went there now, I probably wouldn't recognize a lot of the places, you know, it's awesome. It's beautiful. Grown, grown a lot, grown a lot. And I know you've had a special connection that you really developed while you were in Valdosta. With my... Basketball? Oh, excuse me, Blazers. Valdosta State Blazers. Gene um, and I, uh, when I was on the staff there waiting to get on with the phone company, I was on with Valdosta State staff for a year. Um, we got involved with the Lady Blazers, the ladies basketball team. I couldn't believe those girls were running up and down that... that court and so forth and we just we just uh got the bug and so we um would go to all the ball games and things we'd get the all sports ticket basketball was our main thing and we got very close with the the team and the, and the girls we'd have banquets and each of us would kind of adopt one of the girls and kind of keep a scrapbook of the of the uh, uh articles in the paper for them and give it to them at the banquet um, that was earlier years, and then and then as it grew and everything, we still went. We uh, one of the great honors was we about 30 years we were Blazer Boosters, and um, 
I remember that when we were getting ready to move to Dowling Park at the uh, halftime of one of the football games, the director of athletics had us come to the 50-yard line and had the announcer mention that we were moving, but we would still be connected. But yeah, we're blazer boosters. I still am. They uh, presented a game ball uh, at his funeral, which is a beautiful ball with the, it's ornate and it's got the the blazer loco on it and so forth, but uh, I still go, not as often as I did, but uh, still love it. It's a great place. Well, and I'm sure you were a great inspiration to the girls, too. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, we had good connections. Yeah. Well, those of you who have ever been around Jean um, know that she does like to joke. And um, several times that when I was doing birthday parties, I would ask Jean to be a part of the entertainment and bring jokes. And some, I think one part of you actually did all the jokes. Do you have a joke for us today? Oh my gosh, you didn't tell me about the <laughs> joke. <laughs> oh, well, you've heard this before. This is not a joke, it's just a riddle. That's on, on the spur of the minute. Uh, what do you call a rodent that rides a boat from New York to New Jersey? I don't know. You don't know? Little mouse on the ferry. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I made, I made that up. That's an original. You can tell. <laughs> anyway, anyway, yeah, I've got a, a, a plethora of jokes. I've got a, a, you know, a folder with stuff, you know, but we have fun. You were one of them one time I had you call me when I was doing something. Oh, yes. Pretending my mother was calling me from the nursing home and I was telling her to get back in bed and all this kind of funny stuff, you know, but yeah, you were part of that too. <laughs> um. How do you volunteer at Advent Christian Village? Well, I enjoy being a welcomer, where you can welcome the new people and uh, sit down, have a nice meal, interact, and give them a packet of information, take them for tours around the village if they haven't had a tour, a total tour. And um, just, there's a connection there. I like to do that. Also, I have a paper route and deliver the FNN in Dowling House every Thursday. And uh, I really appreciate this, the raise I got in salary this year for that. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear Twice it. zero is still zero. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I enjoy doing that. But uh, any, any other thing, you know, on the spur of the minute type of thing. But uh, in my old age, I'm kind of slowing down a little bit. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> oh, shoot. Gene, do you have anything on your bucket list you haven't done? Oh, yes. Ever since I was a kid, and I'm probably teenager, early teenager, I wanted to go to Hawaii. I envisioned myself sitting under a palm tree with my beloved while watching the waves hit. Remember the radio, uh, uh, Hawaiian music? You know, I just listened to that music and I could, but that's, you know, that bucket has a leak in it. So I don't think I'll ever do that. But, you know, there's not too much. I've never been on a cruise. I'd love to go on an Alaskan cruise, maybe ride a railroad up there in Alaska and get back on the ship and come home. I, you know, I've done that. I can recommend oh, that. I would love to do that. And I'd almost like to go on one of these Christian cruises sometime, you know, David Jeremiah or some of these other um, wonderful opportunities. But I don't know. You know, I don't know if that will ever come to pass. don't know. Life has surprises. That's right. You know. If you had a piece of advice for a young person today, what would it be? Follow the Lord. I mean, well, the days that we're living in now are, are wicked, dangerous, and tempting, and so forth. And, uh, you know, I feel particularly for my grandchildren, you know, and great-grandchildren that they have to live in a world like it is today. You know, we got to hang on to the Lord. He got me through um, so many things. You know, he and I raised those three kids together, you know, and uh, I just... Um, I just follow the Lord and don't put yourself in tempting situations. You know, avoid them as much as you can, but follow the good Lord and, and uh, you won't miss. You won't miss out. Gene, thank you for joining on me joining me on the front porch today. You're welcome. Let's do it again sometime. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. And now, um, we hope you'll watch uh, future episodes of Front Porch Conversations. Thanks for joining us.